I have a conviction and it's simply this. I believe we need Christmas more this year than ever. So let me tell you what Advent isn't. Advent is not a Christmas countdown. You can actually buy a Christmas countdown calendar with beer shots on Amazon. I'm not sure why you would actually want to do that, but that is not this. It's not a Christmas countdown. Advent is a time of spiritual focus. It's a time to breathe and refocus on one simple amazing thought, that Jesus came, that he came here and that he came near. The word Advent comes from the Latin word Adventus, which is a translation of the Greek word parousia. It's a biblical word used to describe the first time Jesus came. It's also a word to describe when Jesus will come again. So it's a word of hope. The Christmas tradition of Advent, it spans four weeks leading up to Christmas Day, and it has a special emphasis each and every Sunday. So it's a time of preparation. It reminds us that we're in that in-between time from when Jesus came and when he's coming again. So the invitation to Advent is simple. Remember, celebrate, focus on Jesus, and fully enter into the significance and the meaning of the season. So, you know, maybe you've practiced Advent for years. Maybe this is your very first time. Whichever it is, we're going to do this together. So let's pause right here. Five candles. One representing hope, peace, joy, and love. And in the center, a white candle that we call the Christ candle, which we will light on Christmas Eve to remind us that the light of the world has come to each and every one of us. Every week during Advent, we're going to stop and take a moment to worship quietly. The reason we do a lot of this in silence is because between the Old Testament and New Testament, God went quiet for 400 years. 400 years of silence, waiting, longing, anticipating, and worshiping, hoping that Jesus would speak again. And he did. Last week, Pastor Brian lit the first candle. It's the candle of hope. And he read to us, Isaiah 61, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion and in Whatcom County to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. This week is peace. And I think we can agree that peace seems a little scarce this year. But I want you to understand something. Peace isn't something you do. Peace is a state of being that you have access to when you know the Prince of Peace. Peace is strategic stillness when you close your ears to all of the other noise and clutter and you rest in one simple fact. God's in control and God has a plan. Peace is Jesus. Isaiah chapter 9, for unto us a child is born to us, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So would you join me for just a short prayer about peace this week? Father God, would you give us your peace this week? Would you bring us to a moment every single day when we stop reflect, light a candle, and make a choice to choose the Prince of Peace in the midst of all the noise. God, give us the strength and courage to choose peace this week. We pray this in the name of Jesus, our Prince of Peace. Amen. So now we're going to worship. We're going to silently worship as 
Andy and Randy play and sing over us. I want to encourage you. If you could receive peace better standing, then feel free to stand up. If you can receive peace better kneeling, you can slip to the aisle and kneel. And if you receive peace best just sitting where you are and resting, go with that. Whatever God tells you to do, let's do it together. Because we're here again on Christmas. The story hasn't changed. And we're going to tell you the same story again and again and again because it matters.